Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Eileen Dondero Foley City Council Chambers for the special City Council meeting this evening, uh, Monday, May 12, 2008. I'd like to call the meeting to order at this time and have the City Clerk call the roll. Mayor Farini? Here. Assistant Mayor Blaylock? Here. Councilor Noveline Clayborg? Here. Councilor Dwyer? Here. Councilor Smith? Here. Councilor Kennedy? Here. Councilor Spear? Here. Councilor Reynolds? Here. And Councilor Panalakis? Here. Yeah. As you know, this is the reconvening of the public hearing, which was uh, recessed from the April 16, 2008 meeting um, for the proposed fiscal year July 1, 2008 through June 30, 2009 budget. Uh, before we have a brief presentation by the city manager, and it will be very brief, uh, there have been uh, work sessions since that time that have been significant in terms of what we've been able to do. The city manager will present the results of that work by all concerned. And once we've had that presentation, we will open the hearing. Uh, and I'll go into my little speech about the rules of the public hearing at that time. So without any further ado, City Manager John Pahanko. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as the Mayor said, tonight is the reopening of the uh, public hearing on the proposed FY09 budget, which funds uh, city services for police, fire, schools, recreation, libraries, public works, and other municipal departments. Uh, for the period July 1, 2008 through June 30, 2009. And again, as the mayor said, that uh, we will have public comment after uh, the presentation that I'm making. Um, what I'd like to do is make sure everybody has a copy of uh, uh, my uh, handouts for the uh, presentation. If you don't, just, just raise your hand and uh, we'll get you a copy. So uh, you, everybody should have a copy of that. Uh, the budget schedule so far, as the mayor said, uh, we did have a public hearing on uh, April 16th regarding the proposed uh, FY09 budget. Uh, since that time, there have been three work sessions, uh, police and fire, municipal departments, and school departments. Tonight, we're reopening the public hearing. And subsequent to the public hearing this evening, uh, the city council will be meeting on Wednesday evening at 6.30. I think there was a, a, a misprint in the newspaper at 6.30 in the council chambers. And then subsequent to that, the city council is anticipated to act on the proposed FY09 budget on June 2nd at a regular city council meeting. Now, in accordance with the charter, the city council must adopt the budget by the end of June, June 30th, or the proposed budget, as presented by the city manager, becomes law. Now, just to give you a, a recap of uh, what was presented uh, on April 11th, uh, I sent a budget to the city council. Uh, proposing $83,168,000 in expenditures. Those expenditures are broken down in two areas. The first being operating of $67.3 million, and the second area is non-operating of $15.8 million, and for, as I indicated, a total of $83.1 million. That was a proposed increase of approximately $3.3 million, or 4.14% over fiscal year 08. Now, in order to fund that, uh, we would have to raise taxes at, at a level of $17.22, or $0.88 cents over the previous year, which was a 5.39% increase. Now, during the budget work sessions, the first work session we had uh, was with the police department and the police commission. The police commission indicated that they could reduce their budget by $43,000. In addition, the school department, uh, subsequent to their work session, found out that their property and liability insurance uh, was going to come in less than they had anticipated, so there'll be a reduction of $55,000 more in the school department budget. And during the municipal budget uh, work session, I indicated to the city council that we could reduce the capital improvement plan by $150,000. And the reason for that is that uh, the Ocean Road project, 66% uh, of that is being funded by the state, and the remaining match is going to be funded by uh, the developer of the Greenland Mall. So there was a total savings there and a reduction of $248,000. Now, on April 25th, we received good news. Our, um, our rate uh, for health insurance is substantially less than what we anticipated. We originally uh, budgeted at 7.5% increase, which was our guaranteed maximum rate. On April 25th, we received news that our increase would be 2.4%. You can see that there'll be a total savings of about $217,000. Uh, the major savings is in the school department, $126,000. So that will be a reduction in the budget as well. So looking at all that, you can see we have a total reduction of $465,000. 
which basically brings the overall budget to $82.7 million, a 3.56% increase over last year. Now, the City Council early on indicated that they would have a goal of uh, expenditure increase of 3.5%. We started out before the work sessions at 4.14% increase. Uh, the reductions of $465,000 brought us down to 3.56% uh, increase over fiscal year 08. If the City Council wants to continue and meet its goal of 3.5%, there would still be a need for an additional $50,000 $50, reduction in the budget. And Wednesday night, the City Council can discuss that. In addition, um, if you recall, at the first um, public hearing, I indicated that for every one penny in the tax rate equaled $37,500. That means for every reduction in expenditures of $37,500 or every increase in revenue of $37,500 would reduce the tax rate. Uh, in our conversations in the work session, uh, I indicated that we could hold off on replacing uh, parking meters. Uh, that would mean that the uh, parking fund would be reduced by $150,000. Thus, we could transfer that $150,000 over to the general fund revenue. So that would be an additional $150,000 in general fund revenue. So what does that mean? Well, we had the reduction expenditures of $465,000, the increased revenues of $150,000. So the net adjustment to the budget would be $615,000. Uh, this would be a 17 cent reduction in the proposed tax rate from the original proposal that was made back in April. Therefore, uh, the proposed budget, uh, as it's been adjusted, would be uh, require a tax rate of $17.05 or a 71 cent increase over last year, or a 4.35% tax increase. This time I'd like to turn it back to Your Honor to open up for comments. Thank you, and uh, just to, to point out so that, uh, just to be clear for all concerned here, including um, city staff as well as the public, um, you know, the city council did discuss a range from 3 to 3.5%. I think it's the intention, and I think there are varying degrees of interest on, on the city council, but it is the intention that we seek to find additional savings at the next meeting, and I expect that that is what we will try to do. In the meantime, this evening we do have the public hearing, um, and we would like to ask you to come forward. Once again, the rules are that um, you can speak uh, for as long as you wish. Um, unless that it became unduly long and, and inappropriate. You can speak as long as you wish, and uh, you get to speak three times. I'll call it three times, so once we go through everyone, we'll go through it again and again until everyone has had their say. Um, we typically would not answer questions during that, but we will be making note of what it is you do indicate. That will become grist for the mill as we go forward on Wednesday night. Uh, and with that, I will open the public hearing, ask you to come forward and identify yourself. You can form a line if that's needed. Um, please identify yourself where you live and um, tell us what's on your mind. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Ecker, 422 Banfield Road. I hope you're all healthy. I hope you're all happy. Uh, looking around, it looks like not too many persons care about the budget. Otherwise, you would think that this place would be full of people and wind out the door, wouldn't you? you really would. Uh, I have a theory. Don't complain later on if you don't come down here now and complain now. Your mouth shut. That's my theory, one of my theories. You got 88 cents that you're raising it. You might as well make it a dollar. I mean, there's not much difference there. In business, and the city is a business, which always has a leader who I believe is supposed to spend or take in monies. I believe that person is or should be responsible, not just to look at numbers and trust those numbers. to be just and true. If one, I believe that if one does not get out in the field and out into the workplace to see for themselves the numbers given them are okay, how can they say that these numbers up here are really okay? That's a manage, manager's total job, or president, or CEO. 
It takes work above and beyond, though, to accomplish that task. It takes more work than that, than just being a president, a CEO, or a city manager, or a boss. This year, it's a dollar increase. I like to round numbers off. Next year, $2, or a dollar, again. Where and who is supposed to say enough is enough? You okay? You okay, Mr. Ecker? <sighs> Chief? I'm sorry. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Ecker, we're going to have someone come talk to you. Got some EMTs in the room. There's a – Chief, there's a, a defibrillator in the back. Do you want me to dial? Five minute recess. Call a recess.
Thank you. We'll call the meeting back to order. Um, I'm sure we all um, feel for Harold at this moment, and he's in our thoughts and prayers, and I think we'll have to go on as best we can. Uh, and I know it's difficult for everyone to do that, but um, I think under the circumstances it's probably the best thing to do. So he has our sympathy and our concern. With that, can we continue with the public hearing? And I'd like to ask the next speaker to come forward. Good evening. Um, I gather nobody really feels like following what happened. Uh, my name is Martin Cameron, but I'm here representing um, uh, President of the, t of the Association of the Portsmouth Taxpayers, uh, Mr. Bill St. Laurent. He's uh, out of town. He's at, um <clears throat> so I'll read this letter that's, uh, uh, that's from him, word, word for word. Uh, good evening, Mayor and City Councilors. I'm not able to attend this public hearing as I am away on family matters. So I am addressing you with this letter as read by um, association member uh, Martin Cameron. I am addressing you as representative of the Association of Portsmouth Taxpayers. This evening with the encouragement of knowing you are trying vigorously to do what you can to keep your fiscal year 2009 budget at a rate that will benefit both the city departments and the economically pressured taxpayer. This is a economically tough year for all concerned, but you must remember that city departments can return to the council for supplemental requests when their budget runs in the red, but the taxpayer has nowhere to turn to to come up with the money to pay for uh, tax rates from inflated and unnecessary budget spending. This year's budget should have been a zero budget because of the economic times. And I did address this with a few counselors who stated it was not possible because of the county and the state increased budget request. The zero budget I was addressing was the city budget the zero budget I was requesting, uh, addressing was the city budget only, as this is the budget you have fiscal control over. Recently, this organization was approached by a group of a coalition of, uh, for a tax cap in the state of New Hampshire. They were looking for representatives in several cities and towns to start working on tax caps in these cities and towns. We at the Association of Portsmouth Taxpayers have not addressed this organization and feel if a city or a town uh, works with the residents and the city departments to control spending and keep the tax rates at a reasonable amount, tax caps should not be necessary. On the other hand, if a city or town cannot control the spending habit, a tax cap may be the only solution. As it, as it has been in some towns. The Association of Portsmouth Taxpayers addressed the fiscal year 2009 budget at their meetings and several areas of concern were discussed and voted on to bring uh, to this hearing. They are as follows. Uh, number one is extend the upcoming city uh, union contracts for one year with no provision for retroactive payments and take the one million that is projected for the projected need for the contracts out of the budget. Let's tell them how much they can have before we even start with the uh, contract negotiations. Uh, now, uh, number two, has anyone questioned the need for 11 dispatches for the combined fire and police departments in a city the size of Portsmouth? Look to increase 
uh, parking garage fees in the summertime due to the increased volume of tourists. Other cities, uh, larger and smaller, all uh, do this. Since we'll, number three, uh, since we'll be uh, experiencing increased costs for city services, snow plowing, infrastructure maintenance, police and fire protection, we should be looking for other forms of revenue from those who do not pay taxes, such as nonprofits. A fee for services rendered uh, should be considered uh, for such for, uh, these items, such as snow plowing and uh, infrastructure maintenance and police and fire protection. Uh, one item here, I see it's already been addressed, uh, and that is uh, oppose new parking meters, meters which are rejected by 90% of those who use them. I see that item has already been brought into the uh, budget system. Uh, <clears throat> next is uh, control our bonding habits and do not start new bonding projects unless mandated by law, unless one of, until one of the present bonds have matured. The next item, uh, do we have an overabundance of substitute teachers? And lastly, we at the association would like to compliment the Department of Public Works for fiscally controlling their budget year after year and note the hard work and professionalism of this department. <coughs> there will be other um, association representatives here tonight to address other concerns in the fiscal year 2009 budget. We at the association are not organized to oppose taxes. As we know, taxes help make our city work. We want to represent those taxpayers and residents who feel the need to have a voice in the everyday activities of our wonderful city. We also feel they should have some say in the way our taxes are being used. The cooperation of the elected officials and their recognition of taxpayers and residents goes a long way in making a city great. Bill St. Laurent, President, Association of Portsmouth Taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. If you'd like to submit that, we'll be happy to keep that for the record, and I do appreciate you going first. Yeah. We have another speaker? Good evening. My name is Ann Wheeler and I live at 110 Ash Street. I have two children who are in the first and third grades at Little Harbor School. I am the president of the Little Harbor School PTA and I am concerned for the future of our schools. Each year as budget season rolls around, I prepare myself <coughs> for what may be taken away or how the school environment may be, may be altered as a result of the tightened school budget. Committed, caring, qualified administrators, teachers and paraprofessionals, small class sizes, a safe and nurturing school environment. And these are all basic needs of our schools. Each year as a parent, I hold my breath and hope that these basic elements are not altered. Portsmouth is a vibrant community that attracts young families. And if our schools do not continue to provide quality education, this will cease and our whole community will suffer as a result. I grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland. This county has a tradition, traditionally has a poor school system. As a result, it has a very difficult time attracting new businesses to the county, which in turn has affected the housing prices and the overall quality of life there. My parents chose to send my brother and I to private schools, and we never had the opportunity to go to school in the community in which we lived. My husband and I have chosen to live in Portsmouth because of the overall high quality of life. We love our town and we love the surrounding areas. We value education and we want the best opportunities for our children. We love that our kids can walk to school. I'm here to ask the, the City Council to support the budget submitted by the School Board without asking for any additional cuts. Full funding of the proposed budget is necessary in order to provide resources for all our students who are deserving of a quality education and the best teachers available. Please do not let the level of education decline in Portsmouth. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Further speakers in the first round.
Hello, everyone. My name is Rick Condon. I live at 141 Madison Street in Portsmouth, and I also represent the Portsmouth Firefighters Local 1313 as the union president. Tonight, I'd like to rise in support of Fire Chief LeClaire's 5.19% uh, increase in his budget. This represents um, a, a rather large increase, as you know, but it also is the amount needed to maintain 13 firefighters on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the fiscal year 2009. I realize that this increase is greater than the mayor's request to maintain the 3.5%, but this 5.2% that he's asking for still represents a reduction in the overall staffing from last year's operating budget. Last year, the firefighters operated at 14 firefighters at night, and because of budget constraints last year, they had to reduce that number down to 13. So now we're running at 13 firefighters day and night. Um, without the 5.19% as requested by the chief and recommended by the city manager, the fire department will not be able to operate the way that it does, and we will reduce the um, apparatus that's available to respond to calls, namely an engine or an ambulance, and it would also eventually further reduce the staffing. As a case in point, tonight, before we just had our ambulance call, our, our ambulance three was already on the air, but we still had ambulance one available to respond. So right now, we actually have the only two ambulances that we have in the city on duty, or on the air right now and that ambulance was available to respond because we still have 13 firefighters on duty. Therefore, I would um, urge you to respond to, um, I would urge you to support the 5.1.9% increase even though it's greater than what you were looking for earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Speakers in the first round. Hi, my name is Erica Taylor. I live at 205 Odeon Point Road. I'm also the Vice President of the PTA at Little Harbor. I have two children attending there currently, and in the fall I'll have three children attending there. And I just want to um, urge you all to support the school budget as proposed by the school board without any cuts. Um, it's essential to have the appropriate funding to maintain small class size and appropriate teacher-student ratio. This contributes to the high kneecap scores that we are so proud of here in Portsmouth. Uh, it's important for our school children, but also for the community at large, because having good schools really makes people want to live here. And community, uh, Portsmouth is a wonderful community, and so let's keep it that way. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Helen Steele. I live at 53 Prey Street in Portsmouth. And uh, I, I want to start by saying that I definitely appreciate all the work that every department has put into preparing their budgets. I am against adopting the current budget the way it is because it doesn't take into a lot of consideration a lot of things. Number one, it rubber stamps allocations from year to year and then plops on top of that a cost of living increase and any other things that the department, each department may feel that they need. And it, uh, it, just, it just doesn't call for any accountability in any of the departments. If you bought a lawnmower and it didn't work, you'd not buy that brand again. But here, we year after year, we just rubber stamp everything uh, that comes through. And what I'm saying is that we, what we really need, and the reason I don't like to see this budget adopted as it is, is because we need some new thinking. We need people to look at what's going on in the rest of the world. Right now, we're looking at a fiscal, at a uh, shortfall at the state level of 50 to $150 million. If that happens, as it probably will, it's going to trickle down into all the services that we have here. Health services from the, that are uh, funded by the state, education, these things will all be affected. Child care, and we're not making any provision for this in this budget. The other thing is the, the fire department and the police department, they're great people and they do a great job, however, there are other ways of doing, providing these services. In states across the country, they're combining by cross-training, and they're getting rid of a lot of overtime and saving millions and millions of dollars. 
And so what I'm trying to say here is that we need some new thinking. We need to look at these things as though we've never seen them before and try to solve the problems instead of just throwing money, good money after bad. And accountability is really important. We still have kids graduating from high school after 12 years of school in Portsmouth, and they don't know how to make change. They can't even get a job as a clerk. Not everybody, but there are a few, and there shouldn't be any, not with not with the education that they're supposed to be getting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Eric Anderson, 38 George's Terrace. Um, my comments are reflective of um, discussions with the uh, Taxpayers Association and also there are some personal comments in here. Thank you um, for this opportunity to speak. Um, I know you've all worked diligently to achieve your stated goals for the 2009 budget and if it's to be accomplished, well, you're going to have to have your pencils, you know, surgically sharp to finish the job. The following comments are made in trying to assist or offer observations to this subject. Currently, and um, it's been mentioned prior to, currently the budget includes a million dollar, a million dollars in contingency funds for contending with um, uh, any contract renewals that might take place in the fiscal year. Although this might be a safe and respectable approach, it does raise a question by tipping your hat and putting the taxpayer money on the table to see who tries to grab it first. Um, with the uh, current economic trends um, developing and the uncertainties that come with it, along with the hard work of renewing 15 contracts in a relatively short period of time, hopefully you might consider extending those contracts for a year with no, um, and, and, try and, and try and control that there be no retroactive consequence when agreements are achieved. Um, I think you might be able to, you know, look at that million dollars. If it's all going to come off the table, so be it, or a portion of it, but it's been put on the table with the respect of, it is like tipping your hat a little bit. Without specific reference to any one program, it's recognized that federal funding has allowed programs to exist with those federal dollars. The city was sold on the fact that they would sustain themselves. Since some of these funding is disappearing, these programs are transitioning into being funded by city dollars. A hard look has to be taken and justified at programs that were sold under one set of funding sources and now is changing to a taxpayer obligation. Also, we have to take into consideration there was a windfall with 9-11 dollars that came in to the city and, um, and, and, and let the city acquire a, a variety of assets that now require costly city dollars to sustain. I'm not pr uh, on another subject, um, I'm not privileged to know if there's any special circumstances that were made in developing businesses at the Pease Trade Port that allow for tax breaks and potential city revenue. I'm not sure of this. It would be an interesting exercise for the council to review any circumstances of this nature if they exist and explore the possibilities of increasing revenue for the city where applicable. If they do exist, it doesn't seem fair that other local businesses be obligated to a different tax rate than businesses at the trade port. This could be another revenue source for the city. The PASS program. Um, as an observation in reviewing the school budget, the PASS program is not specifically isolated for expenses as with the other schools. This observation is not intended to be critical of the program, but if anybody could help me identify where you can find this program in the budget, I can't. Um, every school, every line item is accounted for in every school. I just can't find the PASS program. Again, it's not a point of criticism. The only general authorization that can be made is that the program is located at the Sherbin School. Might not be the, you know, the best cost alternative. In its day, the school housed over 125 children until there was some school system alignment as, an, a, cost, as a cost effective measure. Housing the current PASS program of under 30 students in its inception might have, been, might have made sense at one time, but now it might, um, it might be looked at or reevaluated to, to, you know, for cost savings to the city from a facility point of view. There is no doubt that the city of Portsmouth will have to deal with consequences of secondary treatment to the sewer system and sewer treatment. 
while um, not a particular subject for this, for, for this budget. It's a recommendation for potential increased revenues that, that they look at the, the revenue source for sewer entrance impact fees for any new entrance and see if there could be an increased revenue source for that. Overtime. I've been here before on this particular subject. Um, here is an issue that has been mentioned in the past and felt there is legitimate concern. Through all city departments and a payroll of over $36 million, overtime makes up 4.78% or $1,643,128. Overtime in 2009 is projected to increase $225,288. The observation to be made is that two departments, police and fire, make up 1.2, 1, $1,290,649 dollars, or 78 percent of all overtime in the city. One could look into each department to see what percentage of the labor is consumed in overtime, but if there is an area to look for budget reductions, one could start here. The council can clearly give a directive that this must be reduced by a certain percentage and then it is the responsibility of the department has to accomplish that, that directive. It's time to reduce this expense. As to general fund capital improvement issues, the following would be suggested. Eliminate the new police station feasibility study for $25,000. Um, Eliminate the 25000 for land acquisition, as it's believed that this fund currently is, um, has about $800,000 in it. Uh, as an additional comment to this land acquisition fund, the Council should consider using some portion of this fund for the acquisition of the new fire station two location to reduce the final bonding budget. It's believed that past and future use of this fund is generally used for match money to acquire other funds for, land, for city land acquisitions. So I think there's a portion of this fund that could be used in the acquisition of the, fire, of the, um, of the new property for the fire station. Um, move the 50000 in the Market Square sidewalk handicap ramp reconstruction into the bond for $500,000 for the citywide sidewalk reconstruction program, and specifically not as an additive. Don't make that $500,000 bond $550,000. Put that $50,000 in that $500,000 bond, and you reduce $50,000 off the general fund. Um, as a note, this overall bonding project might be considered to be reduced to a lesser amount of $500,000 than, five, than the $500,000 that's currently there. <laughs> And looking at the 28 general fund capital improvement projects, there's clearly the room and possibility to reduce some of these projects in scope or size to achieve, to achieve additional reductions while still remaining, while still maintaining the improvements that you desire or, or maintaining the improvements. Out of the $20,400,000 worth of projects, not including enterprise funds projects, that will be scheduled for bonding in 2009, a closer look must be reviewed again to explore reducing the size and scope of some of these projects to gain additional cost reductions over the long term. Two, broad, two projects, the Port Walk Parking Facility, which has a bonding price of $12.5 million, and the middle school improvements for another $3.5 million is a lion's share of, this, of these bonding items. While the Port Walk parking facility appears to be a done deal, its approval might have been rethought under today's economic conditions. It's also hard to relate the $3.5 million middle school improvements to the total discussion and cost in the ongoing middle school issues. The Exit 7 Gateway Improvement Bond for $250,000 could be considered for reduction in size and scope, but still accomplish the project. The relative aspect of bonding issues is something that should not be overlooked and redu in for reductions in the 2009 budget when one is to look at the 2010 through 2014 scheduled bonding items that are still to come. These out-year bonding items still do not include the final cost of any middle school issue or sewer treatment 
issue that the city is that is that the city is going to have to take you know take on. A final observation is made in the general fund. It's under the undesignated fund balance that currently exists and has about um, seven million three hundred and thirty thousand dollars in it. Or, for a little bit of humor's sake, it's the big tin can. Um, it might be thought that it's well worth to continue with the reduction goals that you're trying to achieve, or go beyond that 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 goal. And once there, use a portion of this taxpayer's fund to give some additional tax relief. Please don't use this fund for items that can and should be reduced in this budget or make up the difference of any shortfalls that you stated you would, you would achieve at, 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 um, as no more than 3.5% increase. I think, you can, I think there's a possibility that you can do a better, better job and use that portion of the seven, and then after you've done that job, use a portion of the seven million dollars in the undesignated fund balance to provide greater reductions in relief to the taxpayers, as quoted in the budget, and as um, um, Mr. Bohenko had mentioned, one cent in the tax rate equates to approximately thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars in expenditures or revenues. In closing, I want to thank you for this opportunity the public process in this issue, and the thoroughness of the proposed 2009 budget document. As an overall statement, I believe that every individual of this city has felt differing degrees of anxiety and frustration over the current economic climate. Whatever its increase, whether it's increased in gas, heating oil, food, rent, mortgage payments, it represents a growing strain on daily living and then combined with the cost of taxes, it becomes overbearing. Every one of us, every one of us in some manner, big or small, is giving up something to cope with and offset these circumstances. I believe and hope that any form of tax of these economic strains could start and should start at the local level. And you as our elected officials have a great opportunity here to start a trend. Start a trend for the city, its citizens, its taxpayers that I think would be um, um, well received naturally, and make the city make make its citizens and taxpayers proud, and also make other communities envious. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Uh, additional, if you want to submit your remarks, I'd be happy to take them. Give them the city clerk. There you go. Thank you. Further speakers for the first round of the public hearing. Chief LeClaire. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Christopher LeClaire, 570 Ocean Road, fire chief, uh, father of four, three of them in the public school here in Portsmouth and one in college, hopefully not for much longer. Um, it isn't often that we get to demonstrate to the council what we do. I get a lot of uh, questions from the council trying to understand our staffing levels, and I would be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to explain it to you. Uh, what you saw tonight was station one. Three guys on the engine, two guys on the ambulance. That was it. The response time, less than a minute. And they were already out handling two other calls in the city. So Captain Smith and his two firefighters and the ambulance showed up with a paramedic and an EMTI. Fortunately, we had two medics, Rick Conan and Scott Egan, in the audience tonight with me. Uh, when you talk about professionalism, the paramedic, just the paramedic certification is two years of school. I'd like to talk about the other city departments and what it means to be in Portsmouth. Um, I noticed you noticed that the police chief jumped in. That's what we do in public safety. We help each other out. And the fire department and the police department work very well together, along with the rest of the departments in the city. If you want to talk about accountability, you want to talk about fiscal responsibility, I will tell you that nothing gets out of my office without being checked by the executive assistant to me, and then finance department has their go around with whatever we submit. It's checked. It's balanced. Um, as a resident and a taxpayer and a father, uh, I will tell you, and as a fire chief, not only very proud of my job and my people, but very proud to be a resident of Portsmouth and very proud of our commissions, our council, and especially our city manager who makes it all run and he makes it look pretty easy. So thank you. Thank you. Further speakers in the first round. Rob McDowell, 379 Newcastle Ave. 
member of the Taxpayers Association. Uh, I took a look, a good long look at the budget document one night when we had a meeting over at the uh, public library. It's a lengthy document. And with all due respect, ladies and gentlemen, when you really go through that, that's got enough pork in it. We could almost grab some sauce and go make barbecue. Okay? A couple of things just stood out to me. One was the housing assistance authority for $174,000, I believe. They processed six applications. That comes out to over $23,000 in application. Now, I, need, I understand people need housing, but isn't that what we have real estate agents and mortgage companies? Oh, I know they're not real popular right now for couple other things in the school system budget, okay? Uh, for example, yo me habla español perfectamente, pero no lo, nunca lo veo los, los niños de para acá que necesitan los servicios. I speak fluent Spanish, and I rarely use it in this city. Yet there are two ESOL teachers and, a, and, a, and an aide on that budget. Where are these kids? Where are the kids that need that service? Yet they're in the budget. Also looking through the school department, God bless them, by count, almost one-third are special ed. Now, is that to indicate that one-third of our students in this declining student population are coded and have IEPs? Oh, my gosh. Was there something in the water? Did the elementary schools get doused with Agent Orange? What's up? Now, you know, the fire department and the chief does an outstanding job at a couple of meetings, and I just came back from a large EMS conference in Ohio Similar size cities, Norwalk, Ohio, look at the demographics. It almost mirrors Portsmouth. When those guys, and our, our guys do an excellent job of providing fire and EMS services, not only to Portsmouth, but to Newcastle, Rye, Greenland, yet when our men and equipment are dispatched to those communities, we don't get reimbursed for it. In Ohio, they do the same thing, and Pennsylvania, and they have mechanisms to reimburse each other and those towns. Now, you know, folks out in Newcastle are real nice, but why am I paying for their fire and EMS coverage? They've got plenty of money. The police department. I noticed one of the previous speakers moved up here from PG County, Maryland. So did I. In PG County, they average almost three to five homicides a week. Yet they have five captains and five lieutenants in their police department with over, I don't know what the exact figure is, 2,000 officers. We have five captains and lieutenants. Now, I'm all for people getting promoted and bringing up the rank structure, but that's a very expensive rank structure for a city where the biggest issues seem to be, um, you know, a couple of drug busts out at the high school and I guess chasing down the guy at Cuts Manor, but that's about, and kids skateboarding in Market Square. Now, just to sum up, folks, the bottom line is we're all playing, paying more than enough taxes, and tax caps are coming in this state. And if we can't control spending, they'll end up here, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else for the first round of the public hearing? Seeing no one rise, we go to round two. If you've not had a good enough bite at the apple, take another. Second round. Please come forward and speak if you wish. Now we move on to round. Well, we're still in round two. You've preserved your rights in round two, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> one item that I didn't submit there, but it's been an observation, is new, um, that the, the, there could be the possibility to reduce some of the, you know, some expenses by a no new hire policy. I mean, replacement would be one thing, but a no new hire policy for this fiscal year could probably save some substantial money, as I see it in the budget right now. Thank you. Thank you. Still in the second round, Mr. Cameron. Good evening. For the record, uh, Martin Cameron, 469 Ocean Road. I just uh, wanted to address, uh, I brought up the subject of the uh, $1 million in the, uh, uh, for the negotiation on the union contracts for this year. For us to go, uh, recommendation was to go ahead and uh, extend that until for another one year. Uh, I guess, in a sense, it, it probably looks like it's uh, a tax-saving measure and only for the uh, benefit on one side. But uh, from looking at things on all perspectives, 
uh, this is, it seems to me, this is a bad year to have negotiations on contracts. And in other words, uh, getting, uh, going for more stipends or more of this and more of that and so forth. With uh, the budget shortfall of, I don't know, 150 to 200 million in the state to start with, and they're going to pass down uh, probably the medical insurance for the retirees. Uh, that seems like that's going to be a given. And uh, I'd like to commend uh, the Mayor Farini for going up to Concord and getting involved and uh, get, uh, trying to get his, a handle on the retirement system because uh, that's quite a big bundle. And uh, it was, I thought they were going to solve it last year, but uh, I guess uh, it's still a lot to do. But uh, getting back on the extension, uh, things are, as we all know, things are tough. We all, almost everybody buys oil, gas, we all buy groceries, so we know what's happening. We're getting hit, and we're getting hit very, very hard on all sides. We can't hardly make a move. So it might look, I mean, for the, if I were on the union side, I might say, gee, you know, if we push a little bit too hard here, uh, we might look like uh, it's all one-sided and we really don't care about the taxpayer and so forth. Especially, you have to consider you got some 80-year-old uh, widows that are, they're probably going up right now. I see these ads in the paper of uh, bring in your old jewelry, rings and watches and coins and etc. Uh, they're probably bringing some of that stuff in there now to go ahead and get some money to pay next year's heating bill. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised some, uh, that if they get any uh, rebate on the stimulus check, that's also going towards paying for a tank of oil. So looking at it from that side, uh, I would be you know, and on the union side and so forth, I wouldn't want to be seen as somebody that really didn't care. Because we all know everybody has a tough time. And we think this is a good time to go ahead and extend that contract for the year and uh, go at it uh, again, when hopefully when things will be, uh, come down to a better level. Uh, we know the, the housing situation, that's not getting any better either. As a matter of fact, that really hasn't got to the worst yet. As we look in the back pages of the classified, we see at least a half a dozen foreclosures in there and auctions and so forth. So uh, that's, going, that's still going downhill. As a matter of fact, some of us are going, going to go downhill for probably 20 years before all of these contracts are out in the open and finished. But I did pick up on, a, to close it out, a couple of news items this week that says what can happen and is happening in certain cities around the country. I found that uh, the governor of New Jersey, uh, Governor Corzine, is attempting to sell the New Jersey Turnpike. And that's to pay for the retirement benefits. I guess they're so far in the hole they have to get rid of the turnpike. And I think that was also done in another state a year ago or so, maybe Indiana or something. But uh, another place called Val uh, Vallejo, California. I have fond memories of Vallejo, which is a little north of San Francisco. Thousands of us were, that was a staging base. There were thousands of us shipped out in 50, 51, and 52 to go to Korea. So I know the town pretty good. It's a population of 118,000, about the size of Manchester. Well, uh, I see they filed for bankruptcy. The city did file for bankruptcy. And that was because the pension benefits overwhelmed them. They, they, couldn't, they can't make the payments. So things do happen. I know we're in good shape. Uh, we've got a, a rainy day fund, which is really good. And uh, I think that some of that's being used on the purchase of the uh, land for the fire department, which is a, a lot. We, we think it's the association, we kicked that around, and uh, we thought that was a very good move. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. Speakers for the second round.
Seeing none rise, we'll now go into the third and final round. Would anyone like to speak? Um, Christine Wade, 1380 Woodbury Ave, um, mother of three in the Portsmouth schools and a Portsmouth school teacher. And I just wanted you to know that I was here in support of the school budget that came in low. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the third round? Seeing no one rise, I will close the public hearing. And that ends our meeting effectively for this evening. Wednesday night, we'll be back in action at 6.30 right here. So please come along. It'll be interesting for all concerned, I am sure. It'll be televised as well. Thank you very much.